Hello and welcome back. Uh, in this video, we'll be covering about NumPy and looping over them. All right, let's get started. So uh, let's go back to Python and think about um, doing some uh, list operations where we want to modify the content of the list. So for example, we want to uh, write a loop which computes the square of numbers from 1 to 10. Uh, then this uh, particular code um, probably be one that we'll be writing uh, to find these uh, squared numbers, right? Um, but as we have seen using the NumPy um, scalar operations, we probably don't have to use a for loop or actually any loop uh, using uh, those to calculate these. So can we do the same thing without a loop? Your answer should be yes. Um, if you have watched our uh, NumPy basic videos of using scalar. So if we uh, create a, a NumPy array, um, for instance, we can use the uh, arrange uh, function here, uh, 1, 11 as an input parameter. This will create us values starting from 1 up to 11, but not including. And then we can scale them all by just uh, applying the scalar uh, to the power of 2. So we can quickly do that. Sometimes my face cuts this, so let's squeeze. Okay, so um, array1 equals np dot arrange and then 1, 11. Right, so now we have uh, uh, an array of values 1 to 10, then we can go a uh, equals a to the power of 2. Ah, sorry, array1 equals array1 to the power of 2, right? Then we can check array1 because we have assigned it to um, our value. Now we see that it has been uh, squared. Uh, can we do this? array1 equals 2. Yep, array1 equals. So now we can further square it um, by shortening um, the equation. So if we are just doing some simple um, calculations like this, we can always uh, simplify it in Python, and this will work for NumPy array operations as well. Okay, so NumPy does provide us an efficient way of um, reducing the number of steps to do calculations, um, where using a Python list, you may not be able to do so. All right, so we can use these facts uh, to simplify some of the more complicated uh, problems uh, into a simpler looking ones. So let's have a look. So we're going to be looking at vectorized operations on array. Uh, one of the reasons arrays are important is because we can express batch operations like before uh, without writing any loops. So this way, um, when you write a loop, it can take quite a space and a lot of indentation um, spaces. Uh, but by doing this, uh, we don't have to worry about um, writing a loop. Uh, the NumPy will handle those for us. So effectively, we just say what we want to happen for each element. Uh, the NumPy library takes care of the looping for us. So we don't actually have to implement it ourselves. This is uh, try not to reinvent the wheel kind of a situation. So the loops uh, do still occur. So what it's doing is under the hood, uh, it's trying to go over each item and apply these operations, but uh, these are implemented uh, within the library. So as a user, which is you or me or anybody, um, you don't really have to worry about how it's being handled, but we just know that um, these are all carried out uh, using the library. Okay, and typically these implementations are optimized, so it is much faster than writing your own loop in Python. Okay, so our example is going to be axis crossing. So when we draw some graph, uh, we've, we can uh, observe that lines across like x axis or y axis, then uh, maybe those are some interesting points where we would like to find out, right? So sometimes um, rather than solving equations, we can create 
um, or estimate using approximations. For example, when the signs change, that's where um, the line crosses uh, that particular axis, right? So here is our uh, problem equation. Find approximately the lowest value of theta between zero and pi uh, at which the function given is as such, right? Uh, crosses the x axis. So we could solve this uh, analytically, but let's see how we could uh, find an approximation solution using loops. Let's do that. Okay. So the approach is uh, quite straightforward, four steps. Uh, first, create a variable t, uh, and this is going to loop over successive t values in increment of, say, 0.01 radians, uh, and it's going to calculate um, the value of ft, right? So theta is our input, going to be using variable t, right? So to do that, we need to keep track of the last value of ft we saw. So we want to um, store this uh, in some sort of a list or an array. Uh, if the current value and last value have the same sign, that means we haven't gone over uh, the axis line, uh, then basically they're still on the same side. Uh, but if the signs are different, that means that's the point where the line has crossed over the x-axis, then we have found two values on either side of the x-axis. Uh, so we say that this is the a crossover point, which is an approximate. All right. So if we do write it, it kind of looks like this. Um, we will also try to uh, draw a graph to show this, which, using, which is using the matplotlet. Uh, but don't worry about this for now. Uh, this will be covered in a few videos later after symbolic uh, computations. Okay. So basically what we're doing is we define uh, what we call a skip. So this was the increment that we're going to calculate, uh, which is set to 0 0.01. Of course, if you want to increase the accuracy of your approximations, uh, then we can reduce this into a smaller value. Okay. And basically this crossing value is the one that calculates the equation that we had before. So it's a cosine two times the value plus math pi divided by eight. It's this one uh, plus the second um, part of the equation. Okay, so this is where it's going to spit out the value for the function that we give. Okay, so this is the function. And inside the main, this is where we control uh, the value store the outputs and check whether there's the crossing sign or not okay so if we quickly have a look we start from value equals zero and uh, we calculate the crossing uh, crossing of the value so we start from zero uh, while value is less than math dot pi so that was our loop condition uh, we want to uh, between zero and pi so this is our terminating condition Okay, while that is true, then we get uh, we can increment the value by the skip here uh, and find the current position and see whether the sign has swapped. If it does change the sign, uh, you can easily calculate it by multiplying them together. So if negative values are multiplied together, it gives a positive as well as positives. So only when those two signs are different, it will result in um, value less than zero. So we can print that this is uh, our crossing point where we can minus value uh, skip from the value. So I'm trying to find the point just before the crossover. Okay, but you can get rid of this minus skip uh, if you want to find the point after the crossover, whichever uh, is fine. It's just the point uh, just before the crossover anyway. And then we'll draw this to see where it is. So. So that code is written here. So what I need to do now is um, call the main. I don't have to give any um, inputs. It's all set up for us. Okay. So what it's telling me that is uh, x axis crossing near angle 0 0.75. Uh, don't worry about this long number. It's the floating point precision and our graph generated looks like this. Okay, so at x axis equals zero, uh, we can probably um, zoom in a bit uh, like this. Okay, 
So at x equals uh, y equals zero, uh, the x axis crossing happens, so around here, and uh, it is saying it's about 0 0.5. So if we zoom in a little bit further uh, to this region, okay, at zero, uh, you can see roughly at 0 0.75, it is the crossing point, right? So maybe a little bit higher than that. So this is just before the skip. So maybe after the skip, maybe close up, but once you go over, it's already at a negative point. So this does show us that this approximation is roughly uh, correct. And if we reset uh, this view, uh, we do get another crossing at this point. So it is estimating at 2.5. Uh, zero 0.01. So that's another approximation that it finds uh, that it crosses. Okay. So we can see that this code is working and it's fine. Um, but what we can do here is that using NumPy, we can probably make this code look a bit um, more uh, concise and tidier. Okay, So let's have a look at the NumPy version of this implement implementation. So here, this time, we're using the NumPy, and instead of using uh, the math uh, cosine and sine, uh, we're going to be using the NumPy cosine and sine functions. Why? Because we want to um, return uh, the MP crossing. Uh, where is it? MP crossing. Uh, we want it to be a NumPy type uh, of value so that when we apply uh, NumPy operations, it's going to um, uh, work uh, as we expect them. So this for format is kind of similar. So you can see uh, first, um, what we're going to do is uh, uh, set up values uh, is an arrange function uh, starting from zero up to math.py. Uh, with the skip. So now what we're doing is not rather than going over one value at a time, we just create a bunch of those numbers to begin with. Okay, um, And then what we do is find out the uh, MP crossing of the value. So by doing this, uh, it's going to find um, the calculated value for each point inside value and store it as uh, FTN. So this is going to be of a numpy array okay and what we can do is because now we have created an, a numpy array of type uh, a numpy array uh, which is ftn we can apply uh, numpy operations on this right so signs equals ftn of minus one multiplied by ftn of uh, one to uh, the end what this means is we have FTN shifted by one. Okay, so this means we are reducing the size by one by um, taking out the last item. Okay, and multiply it by starting from the second item to the end. So it's kind of like you are aligning uh, the numpy array shifted by one and then do the multiplication uh, pairwise. So item one will be multiplied by item two, item two will be multiplied by item three, item three will be multiplied by item four, and so forth until the very end. So what this does is it calculates the multiplied numbers and it's essentially doing this if condition pretty much. Um, but because we're doing this pairwise, we don't have to check individual items at a time now we can use this np where function to see when the sign is less than zero. So this is part where the crossover has happened. Uh, then uh, we can plot the values of ftn to show the graph, but the solution will be at where the sign changes are. Sign changes is the indexes, right? So np where function returns the index of where such condition happens. So the sign change contain, contains the indexes where uh, the sign has changed, so we just have to print out um, uh, that particular solution, which will be uh, the crossing over point of value x. Okay, so we have put that in here. So this code is the same as this one, 
and uh, by running main2, which is a numpy version, run this, and as you can see, we do get um, the same results, 0 0.75 and 2.01, and we get the same graph as well. Okay, So uh, as you can see, this graph is exactly the same as the one that you have seen before. Okay, So our NumPy version is a a behaving exactly the same as our non-NumPy version, um, but here you can easily see that the solution is already stored uh, in these uh, sign change indexes, right? So we can easily go over and just print out uh, these values uh, using a simple for loop, while in here we required a while loop plus another if condition to pick, pinpoint out the crossover points. Okay, so the output, uh, what we have seen before was looking like this. Um, and as we mentioned before, the crossing is at angle 0 0.75, but also uh, another crossing at uh, 2.01, but that's uh, greater than pi, so we don't have to worry about that. All right. So here is uh, another exercise. So what you can do here is um, pause the video. You have the lecture slides. Um, try not to look at the provided code um, at the end uh, and try to implement this yourself to see what it looks like first uh, and see whether you can uh, approximate. Okay. Pause it. All right. So one, uh, let's assume that you have done it. So let's carry on. Um, so next exercise is alternating harmonic series. So you probably know the harmonic series is um, well this equation, right? Let me not say it out loud. Uh, and basically, this approaches the value of uh, natural log of value two, or roughly that much. Okay. So use this series to calculate the value of uh, natural log of two to precision of first n terms. So we want an n to be an input uh, to this function. Okay. So what do we have here? Uh, the very first thing is to understand what the question is asking. We want to calculate natural log of 2 to n terms. So the input is going to be uh, the identity, natural log of 2, which equals that equation there. And output is the rough value of this. Okay, And n is going to be also an input to our function to specify how many terms that we're going to uh, accumulate. So we're going to implement this function uh, in our Python code. So let's have a look at our implementation like this. So our harmonic uh, function will take in n as a parameter and our first term is going to be 1. So if uh, n equals 1, it should just return 1, right? And k is going to be the track of our current term and our n is our terminating condition. So that's how many terms we want. Um, so if uh, 1 is given here, this will not run and print 1 out. Uh, while k equals, uh, if n equals 2, it will try to the second one and then terminate and so forth. Right? Um, so what we're going to do is uh, term equals uh, negative 1 uh, to the power of k plus 1. So if we um, track this, uh, if k equals 2, it's going to give us 3. So this is, um, if it's odd, it's going to be negative. If it's even, it's going to be positive, right? Uh, and it's going to be just 1. So this uh, makes sure that our numerator is going to be 1 uh, with the correct sign. So in terms of 2, it's going to be minus, it should be minus half. So this will make sure that it gives us negative 1 at the top divided by 2. So this gives us minus half. Okay, And we add that into the term and then move on to the next k. So when k equals 3, then it's going to be negative 1 to the power of 4. This gives us positive 1. So it's going to be plus divided by 3. So it's going to be uh, plus a third. So it started with 1 minus half plus a third. So you can guess next term is going to be minus a quarter uh, plus a fifth and so forth. So depending on how many um, a value we specify as an n. 
Okay, and then we just show how much it differs uh, between those terms, right? So if we look at this, um, we have the harmonic uh, definition here. So we go harmonic uh, of say just one, it should return us one. Um, here we go. So it just gave us one as expected. But if we go two, it should return us 0 0.5 because it's subtracting uh, half as we expected. And if we go to third, this is going to add on a third onto our final number. So it's going to be 0 0.833333. And so this function seems to be working correctly, right? And eventually, as uh, the value n increases, this value should be uh, approaching the natural logarithm of 2. So if we give, uh, as we go uh, higher and higher, this number is getting closer and closer to this. Is. So like, Say we go up to 50 now, then uh, it seems to be uh, getting closer, uh, go up to 500. As you can see, it gets even more closer and 5,000 should be uh, very close to approximation and, and so forth. So as we increase this number, the approximation is going to be um, more accurate. Okay, so your next exercise here is try to convert this into uh, using a numpy arrays all right but i will leave you uh, to try that uh, but similar approach will be taken um, basically you can uh, create a bunch of numbers based on uh, input n and then you can um, calculate uh, the values using this term uh, equation and then just add it all together using the sum right Give it a go. Um, otherwise, we will stop here uh, and I will see you on the next video. Bye bye.